Hello friends and welcome back to the Ray Law International Channel. As you know, many parts of our U.S. immigration system is in total disarray. However, until our nation starts getting serious, the immigration challenges we are facing today will only increase. Because our immigration system is outdated and failing, you know there are going to be problems. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at some questions and see how we might navigate the current complex immigration system. Let's get started. Now, we do not have all the facts. However, the fact that your husband was a part of a fraudulent marriage will definitely impact your case. Now, it is not a guarantee that your case will be denied, but we would need to see what happened in the marriage fraud matter. Did the USCIS or CBP have clear evidence of fraud, or was it just a subjective decision by an officer ignoring a mountain of evidence in favor of approval? If your husband was the petitioner in the case that was deemed a fraudulent marriage or whether he was a beneficiary of the petition, you will need to retain an immigration attorney to review and analyze the facts of not just the prior union but also your marriage and relationship. If Company A sponsored you for the H-1B lottery registration, it must also be the company that sponsors you for the initial H-1B cap petition. If you want Company B to petition you, then Company B will need to sponsor you for the H-1B lottery registration. Both Company A and Company B can sponsor you for the H-1B registration. Alternatively, once Company A has filed the H-1B cap petition and it is approved, Company B can file an H-1B petition to transfer the H-1B status to Company B. This transfer can take place before or after the initial starting period, which is usually October 1st of that same year. Now, for those who are not familiar, U.S. citizen children can petition for their parents. The parent-child relationship is established by the definition of a child under the INA. U.S. citizen children 21 and older can petition for their mother and father. Here, we have a U.S. citizen stepchild seeking to file an immigrant petition for his stepfather. In order to file the petition, we have to show that the U.S. citizen stepchild and stepfather has met the definition of a child. As long as your stepfather is and remains married to your mother before you turn 18, you may file an immigrant petition on your stepfather's behalf. The stepfather's relationship must have been formed before you turn 18. If your stepfather and mother married after you turn 18 and the parent-child relationship was not established, then you could not petition for him. Alternatively, your mother would have to petition for her spouse, your stepfather, once she obtained her green card. This is a very good question because it forces us to look at several aspects of relationships under the immigration law. You should not travel outside the U.S. while your I-485 is pending. There are exceptions though. When you file your I-485, you are telling the USCIS that you plan to stay here in the U.S. permanently. If you up and leave right in the middle of the process, you are sending the opposite message to the USCIS. I want to stay here, but I'm leaving. The exception in this situation arises when you have advanced permission to leave. That's right, just like school, when you have to have permission to use the restroom, you also have to get permission to leave the U.S. when you file an I-485. To obtain this permission, you have to file for a travel document called Advanced Parole. Advanced Parole is essentially prior approval for you to leave and, more importantly, return without disrupting your current pending immigration request. This is a sticking point for many applicants, so work with your immigration attorney and plan ahead. We always plan with our clients far in advance so that they are able to adjust their schedules and expectations. Generally, if you were issued a traffic ticket or traffic citation, it should be disclosed to the USCIS when applying for naturalization. A few minor traffic tickets will not negatively impact your case. 
If you have trouble remembering details about the traffic tickets, you can go to your local DMV or Secretary of State and require a copy of your driving record. Now, every case is unique with varying facts that give rise to various challenges. Don't assume that the USCIS will be understanding and just overlook a few errors, misunderstandings, or missing documents. Presently, not only will such problems cause your case to be denied, but the current protocol is to immediately place you into deportation proceedings. Oh, did I mention that it could take you three to five years to get out of deportation proceedings? Now, more than ever, it is important that you have an immigration attorney involved in your immigration case. Get the Ray Law Advantage. Get the information and knowledge you need to have peace of mind. Stay updated on immigration matters by subscribing to our channel and sharing it with friends. Stay educated, stay informed, and until next time, stay on the right immigration path.